Paul, McGuire, Grimes, A, B, C, Minneapolis, Sasha, it is really great talking today. I am loving Disclaimer, and you're very terrific in it, so thank you for the time today. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say. Yeah, it's 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 really got a hold on me. Um, take me through reading these scripts. Did you get all seven at once, and when did you know that you had to take this on? Well, I read it, and I'd been talking with Alfonso Coron for about 20 years about working together. Um, he approached me really early on in my career, and I'd seen E.T. Mama Tambien. And we went through a variety of projects that we almost did, didn't do. And so he sent me this, and I read it. I was like, okay, I want to play this role. And he said, I've already given that to Kevin Klein. <laughs> he goes, I want you to play the role of Robert. And I said, uh, okay, well, if so, let's work on it. And it was, Robert was a pretty different character when I first read it and so we really collaborated a lot in trying to make him a specific character that we really believed why he went on that journey so hopefully i succeeded i love that he's so collaborative even as a writer and a director that he's open to change open to getting that actor feedback i think that he's one of the greatest and most visually stunning filmmakers of our time describe collaborating with them on this role and that kind of collaboration process that you were kind of just teasing there so for me, it's all about what's in the script. And I didn't really understand why Robert would do the things that he did with the original script. So I wanted to put in little hints as to his personality that were unique to him. So there's like in the first scene, I, I suggested this line, which was, I'm always happy to be your plus one. He's just come back from this award ceremony celebrating the wife that he loves. But I felt it was an important thing because you realize there's a little bit of insecurity that he is number two in the relationship and potentially a little bit jealous, even if he's not aware of it. And then with this revelation that comes along, consciously or subconsciously, here's a, a way to suddenly become the alpha in the relationship. And so it's a, to me, it's a really interesting theme of people who can be sadistic and cruel <laughs> while convincing themselves that they are being morally virtuous. You know, this virtue signaling, while the undercurrent is actual an excuse for cruelty. Right, absolutely. Oh, God. Um, you've been, I love seeing you in dramatic roles, whether it was this or The Trial of Chicago 7. Does the comedian in you have to kind of fight that inner tendency to not go there and to use those instincts? Yeah, I mean, certainly the first couple of weeks I was trying to be funny on set right. and, you know, muck around. And he basically said, OK, Sasha, we're not friends on this. You know, let's take it seriously. And yeah, you know, so it's a really serious role. There's not one laugh in it. If anyone who's seen any of my other stuff, you will be disappointed if you're expecting to even giggle. Um, but yeah, it... It's the same real theory because if I'm doing Borat or I'm doing you know, The Dictator or any of those characters, it's all about the language and it's all about the character and you know what's the specificity of that particular character that makes The Dictator different from Borat, different from Bruno, different from King Julian. It's you know it's what you know. How do you make those characters unique? Yeah. Oh, that I want to dive in. That's so hard, but I got the wrap. Sasha, thank you for the time today. And I hope people obsess over this like I have been. So thank you for the okay, time today. Great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, big time. Thank you. Paul McGuire Grimes, A, B, C, Minneapolis. Alfonso, it is an absolute honor getting to talk to you today. You are one of my favorite filmmakers. So this is such a treat. And disclaimer, is such a hold over me. I am loving it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Do you change the, 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 the videos behind you according to the director? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, tell me no. Tell me that that's always the background. This is this. I always have an Alfonso Cuarón shrine up for anyone to come in here. So yes, it's Thank true. You. Thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah, I love seeing you working within this medium of a limited series. What did you love about telling this in chapters versus kind of making it into a film? Well, I could not phantom the way of doing this uh, to to do it in in a in a conventionally length narrative. Uh, yes, of course you can do it, but you have to leave the, the, the bare bones of the plot, you know? So it would be enjoyable, I'm sure. But I, I think that this 
lend the opportunity to explore different themes and also to explore narrative and how uh, the, uh, the, the, how narrative works with us, the effect of narrative and how we create narratives all the time. Yeah, absolutely. It's really fascinating to see the story through three different narratives and three different perspectives. And I kept thinking about the use of an antagonist or an unreliable narrator. How do you do you as a writer and a director have to judge certain characters or do you leave that up to the actor or the audience to interpret them how they want to? I think that is the audience who who who, who interprets this because remember something. I mean, you cannot write uh, judging a character because that's very unfair and then you're just kind of writing just the tip of the iceberg of what the, that character really is. Uh, and, and an actor, uh, l uh, look, a character doesn't judge itself as, as a bad person. You know, a, a character works about his, his, his or her mo own motivations uh, uh, going through this world, same as anybody of us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. You get to work with these greats, with Kevin Klein and Kate Blanchett and Leslie Manville. How do they make you a better director? Well, I, that is the thing. Look, it's as, it's if you are in an orchestra and you're conducting and suddenly you have these amazing virtuosos coming to play with you, you have to up your game. You, know? <laughs> you, you have to up your game, otherwise uh, things are not going to work out. So that, that is the amazing thing of working with these, with these actors. You know, it's like working with Kate, with Leslie, Leslie Manville. What a, what a jewel. It's like, uh, I don't think we speak about enough about, about Leslie Manville. Or also, uh, um, uh, Cody, Cody Smith Mafee. What, oh. what, what a terrific actor. In those scenes, I have to say, I have to, just seeing him perform, I said, well, I have to figure a way of, of making, to whatever I do has to honor what he's doing. Yeah, he's really great, especially as the show progresses and you see more from that character. You get to work with Emmanuel Lubetsky again, who's you're such a great collaborator with him and Bruno Del Bonel. Tell me about wanting to have two different cinematographers and trying to find those visions and why that was. Because uh, when, as we were going to do, I spoke with uh, Emmanuel Lubezki, we call him Chivo, from the get-go. Uh, even he's my oldest collaborator. So even if I have an idea of a film, I start chatting with him. So since the moment I says, I am thinking of writing this, we start having conversations. And says, we're going to have three main narratives, actually four, because there's also the narrative of the, of the, of the book, what happens in the book. And says, one is going to have a voiceover in, fir in first person, another in second person, another in third person. And I would like each one of them to have a different cin cinematic language. And, says, and it's when Chivo had the idea of, okay, let's have a, another cinematographer so the contrast is even, even starker. And uh, so the, the whole idea is that by doing all of this, we engage the audience with their own preconceptions or, uh, or judgments of what is happening all the time. And uh, just to make it an experience that is gripping, that you just, uh, you know, in many ways, because the audience becomes the fifth narrator. The narrator is feeling everything and all the blacks through, the, through his or her own judgment. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I'm getting the wrap and I have 80,000 more questions for you, Alfonso. This has been a treat. I hope people love this as much as I have. And it's, it's, it's really well done. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate it. Thank you.